the dairy started in 1919 with two cows. The farm war was on Diamond Hill in the Kapahulu area where Campbell Avenue still runs. This is my father all dressed up, not as a farmer, but as a picture-taking couple. <laughs> Grandma is more on the business side. Grandpa was the quiet. Don't say too much. But I think they changed the name about three times before it became Diamond Head Dairy. Each one of us children had a job to do. Three boys and five girls. I was taking care of the ducks and chickens. She had yeah, to get the wheelbarrow. And, and she used to mix the feed. Sometimes they, lay, they would lay eggs and I would collect the chickens and I would sell them back to my mother. And that's how I made some money. Even though everything was free, she would pay me and my brother bought me a scale so I could weigh the egg so that if it's a small egg it was maybe 60 cents it was middle size maybe 70 cents a dozen and even it, it was large it was 80 cents a dozen we cleared up a little portion near our house so I planted a garden my brother just bought me seeds of vegetables and things like that and I planted them and it grew I couldn't dig, but I could play with dirt and make a pile. So that was where I planted my garden. So I used to wash the bottle, throw them on the next, you know, wa uh, cold water. We rinse it and put it in the wire basket and we to steam it and then we cool it. Then Uncle Yop put the milk in there. I had to do everything with grandma, so I didn't go out. I didn't go to football games. We have to stay home, come by a certain time. Oh, one time I came at 6 o'clock, I got stolen because I didn't cook. The cows, oh, my father and all my brothers. Cows come in and get harnessed, and while they're eating, the workers are milking their cows. There was a whole line, two lines of cows being milked at the same time. When they were all through, they were sent out to the pasture again, and the next batch came in. Two o'clock in the afternoon, that's the first shift, and then two o'clock in the morning. My father and one of my brothers, after milking their cows in the morning, they would take their truck and go all over the area, especially in Manoa, to find those tall grasses to cut them off and bring it back for the cows to chew grasses because our pasture had no grass. It was just dirt and stones. My brothers, they didn't go into the military because the government felt dairy workers are essential workers. So they did not go to war and just melt. And then we had a military area in Ruger, at Ruger near our place. So some of them would come down and, you know, drink our milk and things like that. So they were friendly and we were friendly with the soldiers that came down. You would have to, uh, you can't turn on your light, so the window's got to be all painted black. And then when you, you turn on light, you have to make real, maybe candle or something mm -hmm. like that. And in the mid-40s. Mid-40s. You know, I don't really miss the dairy because I was so young, I had to carry the personal slop to way down to the ducks for them to eat. And that was hard work for me, yes. You know, as a little first, second, third grader. Well, we had the dairy for so long. When they sold it, we were so happy because we don't have to work. We wanted to get everything away, so that's how we didn't save nothing. 
you know, mail covers, mm -hmm. and people say, oh, no, you didn't save, you had cases and cases in the way house. What for? You want to get rid of well, at the time, you don't even think about collection. I didn't realize people can just go freely and do nothing. I just assumed everybody had jobs to do, even if they were young, you know. I was so innocent and ignorant in that way.